our energy supply, it's getting more complex. We have these distributed energy systems, distributed energy resources. All of this is both creating challenges and also giving us opportunities on utilizing software for, again, both on the design all the way through the implementation and the use of our systems. Behind the meter, there's in front of the meter, there's EVs, you know, all the things that we'll probably all talk about on, on the panel. And all those things, you know, have to have to talk to each other to be smart. And the, and the grid actually has to get smarter. And what will enable that on, on all fronts is, is the software, right? Um, and I think, again, the trend is to move away from um, software that really is just only engineering driven to software that's going to provide value and insights, especially with all the data that's coming in. Like the data is only good as like how you parse it or I can look at it or the meaning that you can derive from it. And so those are all things that we consider um, to help, you know, make this clean tech revolution happen. Like I think software is really kind of the backbone of that to, to kind of the key at the end of the day. But to look at these individually, and understand the um, solution, like you know what mix of solar, battery, EV chargers, generators, whatever mix of technologies are needed, and the business case. You know what is the return on investment? What is the net present value of the project? What is the uh, free cash flow that you can expect? All of these require a level of sophistication that if you were to look at them individually, you'd never get through that many sites. So Discover really uh, is able to provide that high level portfolio view in, in, in a matter of minutes uh, around, around sites. And then uh, we also have, uh, we felt that it's important to enable business development and sales to make uh, selling these systems as easy as possible while still maintaining that sophistication. So, you know, we talk about usability and uh, we touched a little bit on the business uh, to consumer versus business to business experience. A lot of it is, around uh, innovation around the interface as well to automate as much as possible so that there's not as much information input required or thinking, I should say, required from the end user. And our proposed solution uh, has been developed to address that by helping really the sales biz dev people respond really, really quickly with sophisticated proposals. It's about not only coming up and generating the optimal solution from like the size of the battery, the size of the solar array, the size of generators, how many EV charges you need or what type level one, level two, level three, but also the balance of the system. And the balance of the system can be 30% of the cost of a project. I mean, you cannot ignore cables. You cannot ignore transformers and you cannot ignore their capacities. So if you're trying to avoid a capacity upgrade from the utility or the utility wants to avoid that and still be able to reliably enable EV fast charging, we address that because those are inputs into the system and into the algorithm as it generates a solution. Knowing all of this information ahead of time will help build a, a, a system less expensive and faster, right? And there's our customers, the, the end customers are looking for CapEx reductions and timeline reductions. Everything's taking so much longer. So yeah, having having this level of granularity and visibility in the beginning, and then you, again, as Adi was just saying, using these same uh, algorithms and strategies that you built into the for initial forecast in the uh, actual operation and optimization of the of the um, technology once it's installed and deployed uh, is crucial for bankability. And the only the next piece is like the unknowns, right? When it's EV charging, well, how many cars are going to plug in? What are the driver needs? How fast do those need to be charged? And then how much available energy is there? Where's it coming from? Um, and kind of how's that going to impact? Uh, the rest of the operations. I myself, I come, I, I play video games. I always have. So, you know, if it's not interesting, no matter how cool, yeah, you know, you, how just because it's complex doesn't mean it needs to be boring and hard to use. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't it be fun? And and when you make it fun, when you, it becomes approachable and when it's approachable, then you have a broader audience that can engage with it. And at the end of the day, if we're trying, trying to drive impact at the global level, it has to be accessible by the masses of engineers and planners out there versus some bespoke complicated thing that needs, you know, nine months of training. The optimizer, which is like, li which lives in the cloud, it's part of the, part of the system. And every five minutes is like, okay, well, what is the most optimal strategy for operating these assets? Is it going to be uh, reducing the peak, like the, the, the deploying the battery and reducing load right now, or is it more advantageous to hold the battery and reduce it later from 4 PM to 9 PM? because the value of that arbitrage is higher. 
right? So it's being able to take in, again, these real-time conditions and then use those uh, conditions to make decisions on how to operate these assets. A lot of different value streams become available to charging infrastructure owner operators when they actually deploy um, on-site generation of storage technologies that normally would not be there if they're solely reliant on a grid connection. But to really make that happen, um, you need a, 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 the level of sophistication that at least we feel um, the market has been asking for to achieve bankability around these outcomes. And then taking that same brain that made the promises into a real-time operation environment to make sure that they're actually being captured, but in a dynamic environment. So planning, we're always using historical information. Operations, it switches and it uses um, uh, predictions using artificial intelligence.